Good morning. Um, this is uh, part one of, uh, of uh, statistics for uh, trauma research, and, and uh, for, uh, for our purposes here, we're uh, just getting back to uh, the absolute basics uh, for, uh, for, for this, first, um, uh, this first talk. Um, and, and absolutely, we are uh, going back to uh, what is statistics, uh, and a lot of people think of statistics as um, math. Um, math is involved, uh, uh, absolutely, uh, but it's really more the science of data. It's uh, collecting, summarizing, and interpreting data and understanding your data. Um, that's, uh, that's absolutely key uh, for, uh, for statistics and, uh, and how it varies. Um, statistics really tells a story. Um, and, uh, and you need to, to know uh, how it was collected and, uh, and different things about uh, about what it means in order to, to interpret it well. Um, this, uh, this graph just shows uh, our uh, trauma registry data and, and actually this, uh, you'll notice two lines here. The, uh, the, the blue line uh, on the bottom is the, is the actual number of trauma registries that were entered. Uh, the red line is the number of patients we actually saw uh, in the trauma service from the beginning of the trauma system in uh, 19, uh, actually, well, I guess this starts in 1985 uh, through uh, 2011. And so you notice a big gap here um, where, uh, where during uh, from about, what, 86 uh, through about uh, 02, um, there's uh, quite a few that, that were not entered into the trauma registry. Uh, reason for that is uh, we had uh, limited resources for, uh, for entering uh, information, uh, and so uh, we only entered uh, those uh, uh, those patients that that were actually required uh, by uh, by the county to be reported. Uh, so there's uh, uh, so that's something you need to be aware of uh, when when you're looking at trends over time. Is uh, is uh, what what happened? If you see a, a big increase, uh, one of the first questions we we ask is, all right. What happened at that time? Uh, was there a change in policy or, or something like that that might explain this? Um, because we absolutely do have a huge increase here, but it's, uh, it's more because of a, a change in protocol than anything else. But that's just kind of, kind of an example of, uh, of what you can get into uh, with, uh, with statistics um, and, and where you might uh, get into trouble when, if you uh, uh, jump to a conclusion too quickly. Um, biostatistics is really just statistics applied to uh, biology or health or, uh, uh, or a medical application. And the, the key part uh, to the definition here uh, in uh, collecting, summarizing, and interpreting information, making inferences, um, is accounting for uh, the uncertainty uh, that's, that's involved in that. Um, I, uh, I like to say that uh, statistics uh, really is the science of saying I don't know. Um, and uh, but but you're able to, to quantify exactly how unsure you are. Um, so I don't know by exactly this much um, is uh, is what you're you're able to say. And so yeah, uncertainty is uh, is the same as saying variability. Um, I mean I, I can say it takes me about 25 minutes to, to drive to work in the morning. Uh, but but that can change uh, from day to day depending on if I hit a red light. Um, or a dog, uh, or um, or if uh, anything else uh, happens, if uh, if if I'm in a uh, if I need to stop for gas or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, the, of course the, the world is full, full of variation, um, and uh, so our, our challenge here is to is to find that signal out of all that noise and and uh, and that variability that we see uh, in the data. And. Um, I, I used to have a boss that said, I don't care if you're correct, just be consistent. Um, but um, this is just a, an example of consistency only being a virtue if uh, you're, you're not a screw up. Um, so yeah, you, you can be extremely consistent, but still be wrong uh, multiple times. Okay. Now our objective with statistics really is to make some sort of a statement about a population overall. Um, it may be the county of San Diego, it may be everybody in the US, it, it may be uh, all the patients we might potentially see 
here. Um, but, uh, but usually it's not feasible uh, to gather data on all of those people. So we have to uh, base those, uh, so we have to, uh, to make generalizations based on a sample uh, from, a, uh, from that population. Hopefully that sample is representative of the population and, and all the, the variability within the population. But it's still a sample, and, and so it's, it's not everybody. And, uh, and so, so based on that, we can, uh, make some, uh, um, we, we can make some inferences uh, about that population. Now, there are uh, two different uh, types of, uh, of biostatistics, or even statistics. There's descriptive and inferential. Uh, descriptive is just uh, looking at the who, what, when, uh, and where. Of, uh, of, uh, of data. It's just uh, presenting, organizing, and summarizing uh, data in, in a way that uh, essentially describes uh, what, what you're looking at. Inferential is where you're uh, trying to, uh, to test some hypotheses and, and, uh, and uh, come to some conclusions about uh, maybe an effectiveness of a medication uh, or risk factors for, uh, uh, for some sort of an outcome. So that's where we're answering the questions why and how. And uh, so here's just some, some examples of, of questions that, uh, that you can ask and, and answer uh, using statistics. Um, uh, on the very basic level, uh, how many older adults in San Diego County are on anticoagulant medication? I can see how this uh, could definitely be uh, useful uh, for, for us so, so we can get some idea of the prevalence. Might uh, use just a, a general population survey uh, to uh, um, maybe a random digit dial type thing. Um, asking uh, a sample of, uh, of older adults in the population whether they, uh, they are on anticoagulant medication and, uh, uh, and say uh, whatever that percentage is, this is uh, likely the percentage of uh, your, your fall patients uh, that, uh, the, that are likely to, to have that. Um, the, another one, uh, what's the rate of falls uh, among older adults in San Diego County? Uh, or even in our catchment area. Um, that's uh, uh, actually probably a little more straightforward because we have uh, existing data on the number of ambulance runs, uh, uh, ED uh, uh, visits, um, you know, trauma patients, obviously. Uh, and so, so that's more along the lines of surveillance. Uh, and we can, uh, we can look at that number and, uh, and, and then we can uh, look at the population where that comes from and calculate a rate and say, okay, so this is the actual risk of falling uh, and, and falling uh, severely enough to be seen uh, by a healthcare professional. Um, <clears throat> we can take that one step further and, and say, all right, so, uh, so what characteristics increase uh, an older adult's risk of falling? Uh, and that's, that's more analytical. Uh, and so, so we can approach that in one of two ways. Uh, we can either uh, start with a cohort of older adults uh, gather some information on them, follow them up, and uh, maybe uh, 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 survey them every week or every month or so and, say, and, uh, and ask them about whether or not they fell. Um, alternatively, if you want to do that study a little more quickly, um, you, can, uh, you can start with uh, patients who fell, uh, compare them with a group of, uh, uh, of older adults who have not fallen recently, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and find out what, they, what their characteristics were. Um, and uh, and uh, a little more exciting probably to this group, how effective is a new drug in reversing the effects of uh, anticoagulant medication? That's where you're going to be uh, doing your randomized clinical trials. And, um, and uh, taking a, a, a group of patients, randomizing them to, to the drug or your standard of care, um, and, uh, and seeing how effective that, that medicine is. <clears throat> And uh, in clinical, clinical practice, there's uh, basically three areas uh, that, uh, that we can look at. Um, uh, diagnosis, uh, prognosis, and, and therapy. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, some examples that, that I found just on, on a quick lit, lit search. Um, uh, there's uh, uh, one on uh, factors associated with abdominal injury, d depending on the, uh, uh, the, the mechanism of, of crash uh, by uh, clinic and colleagues. Um, <coughs> Um, where, uh, where based on the, the mechanism, you have some idea uh, of, uh, of the likelihood of, uh, of types of injuries um, that, that you're going to be able to see. Um, uh, prognosis, okay, so what, what's the likely outcome uh, given, uh, uh, given risk factors that, uh, uh, that your patients have? Um, so, uh, so whether they're, uh, for the example here, if, uh, if, if they're on uh, warfarin or uh, antiplatelet agents. Um, 
uh, when uh, before they before they got injured, um, and uh, and therapy of course. Uh, going back to the the example of the randomized clinical trial, uh, this example was uh, was looking at the uh, um, the, the effect of. Uh, surgical treatment of zygomatic bone fracture using two points versus three points, uh, and I'm not sure what their uh, their conclusion was, but uh, sounds like an exciting study. <coughs> so, again, I said we were going back to basics, and this is about as basic as you can get. The variable uh, is the smallest unit of data. Uh, that's the thing that's being measured, uh, and there's. Uh, two basic types of variables. There's a dependent variable, that's your outcome variable, uh, and uh, independent variables. Um, those are, uh, are the things that are uh, potential risk factors uh, or interventions or uh, possibly the thing that you're, uh, that you're manipulating that may affect uh, the outcome. And data. Um, so th this is how it comes across. Usually when you look at it in a spreadsheet format, Probably not particularly useful because, because uh, in general, we have uh, coded data, um, and if you don't know the meaning of the codes, that's not going to be very useful for you. Some of this is fairly obvious. I'm not sure how well you can read that, but we've got arrival date and time, and uh, and uh, and discharge date and, and uh, uh, ETOH um, level, um, and uh, and so so you can see, all right, there's uh, there's something there, but it but it's hard to, to make generalizations based on just a line listing. But that's the most basic uh, way of presenting data. Um, so um, going back to the the types of variables, though, that's going to impact how you're going to analyze the data. And and uh, and types of variables can uh, can be uh, separated into uh, discrete and continuous. And um, I actually like the uh, this mnemonic noir just because it sounds cool, um, but uh, <coughs> but the the discrete variables uh, can be uh, uh, separated into the nominal or the categorical variables um, and ordinal. Uh, so uh, so nominal is where order doesn't matter at all. The most basic type of variable is just the dichotomous variable. Just, uh, two possible values: yes, no, on, off, one, zero, um, and. Um, Ordinal is uh, is discrete values, but the but the order is important. Something like uh, gold, silver, bronze, um, yeah, first, second, third place. Um, continuous variables actually, uh, it, uh, yeah, there are different types of continuous variables as well. Um, and um, usually, for for our purposes, it's it's not totally critical. However. Um, <coughs> The, uh, the difference is that uh, uh, interval uh, variables, there's uh, actually not a meaningful zero value. Uh, so something like uh, temperature, um, where, uh, where, um, uh, where 50 degrees is not necessarily twice as hot as uh, 25 degrees, um, and um, uh, an IQ score. Um, so, so the difference actually means something, but the ratio does not uh, necessarily. Ratio is where you can actually say something is twice as blank as something else. So, uh, so mass, you can say something is twice as heavy as something else. Um, so that's, a, that's a, a continuous variable where, where zero actually means something. And so, uh, so yeah, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio are our types of variables that we're going to be working with. And so just to, uh, to give you a, a quick quiz and, and example, um, uh, student ID, we, well, we won't even go into that, but uh, uh, height in inches would then be ratio uh, variable, weight in pounds, again, a ratio variable. Um, uh, sex uh, here, I've heard some people say ordinal, but uh, you know, that's if, uh, if, if one is uh, inherently superior to the other. Um, <coughs> but, uh, but, but yeah, no, that's, uh, that's you know, probably more likely to be categorical or nominal. Uh, grade, more likely to be ordinal. Uh, and temperature, um, a, uh, uh, more like an, uh, an interval uh, variable. OK, so now that we know who we're playing with, uh, how are we going to, uh, to display that and tell our story that the statistics are, uh, are trying to, to convey? Um, the most basic is going to be just the line listing. We already saw that, just a, a listing of, uh, of data. It's OK if, uh, if you can take the time to look through one at a time, but really doesn't tell the, the, the overall story. Um, tables uh, are uh, where you just have the, uh, the, uh, the table of, uh, of numbers and percents. 
Um, a lot of people like uh, like pictures, so that's where where the charts come in, um, and um, and maps actually uh, come in very very handy, um, and that's uh, that's taking it uh, kind of to, to the next levels where we can uh, where we can see how, how things are are distributed spatially. Uh, so, so yeah, just a, a very basic uh, uh, frequency table of a dichotomous variable. Um, as the, the other thing I wanted to, to do with, it, with this is, uh, is get a chance to kind of explore our trauma registry data, uh, too. So you get uh, kind of an idea of, uh, of who we're looking at. This is actually uh, data from, uh, from 2011. So we actually had 2,665 patients. Um, and um, <coughs> we had uh, criteria for uh, for this modified MTOS uh, uh, patient, that's uh, that's patients who were uh, were admitted to the hospital for at least 24 hours, uh, or uh, were received via interfacility transfer, or died um, after they arrived. And so, uh, so out of those 2,665 patients, uh, well, there there were 904 who uh, who were uh, discharged before 24 hours. Uh, and uh, and didn't see any uh, um, uh, any definitive care uh, during that time, um, but uh, but about two thirds actually did meet those criteria, and so so yeah you you can get that uh, out of this that uh, that works pretty well. Um, another way of presenting that everybody's seen a, a pie graph and and uh, and this uh, actually uh, visually tells you a, a, a little bit uh, more effectively okay yeah now i can see that about two-thirds uh, actually met those criteria but it doesn't necessarily give you the numbers um, so uh, so depending on on what you're looking for it's um that how you present the data is going to make a difference um a nominal variable uh so in that that same year um, we uh, again have the 2,665 uh, patients, uh, but uh, but here's the the mechanism of injury, uh, and we can see that um, uh, how that's distributed here. Um, and uh, looking through, we we see okay, yeah, falls is uh, pretty high there. We've got 31% uh, uh, of our patients uh, were actually uh, seen because they they fell, um, and it might surprise people to see that uh, only about half that were motor vehicle occupants. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, slightly more uh, were uh, were assaults. Um, I mean, slightly more than than the motor vehicle occupants were assaults. Um, but again, this is a, a frequency table. Uh, it might stand out a little better in, in something like a a bar chart, um, where we can say, oh, okay, now the, those falls really stand out, and, and you can see, okay, now definitely uh, assaults are number two, and motor vehicle occupants number three. Um, but. Uh, <clears throat> But uh, even better, possibly you can uh, you can switch the order around and and uh, and uh, and uh, and actually uh, walk through uh, uh, and rank these uh, in the in the order that uh, that they occurred. And just to complete the picture, um, pie graphs. Uh, sometimes pie graphs, especially when you get to a whole bunch of uh, uh, of categories. Get a little busy, uh, as you can see here. This uh, this actually just kind of looks like a color wheel at this point, um, but it's uh, but, but but you can still oh gosh, you know what? The distribution's a little bit different, and uh, and that's because this is a much uh, larger uh, time frame here, um, and and that actually tells you something too. Um, the the distribution of, of injuries has changed over time uh, quite a bit. Um, where it used to be uh, motor vehicle occupants were number one, as you can see in, in, in this chart. Uh, but that's, uh, that's changed quite a bit over time. In fact, uh, over the last 10 years, motor vehicle occupants has, uh, has dropped by about, I think it was 25%, uh, while falls has increased by about 50%. Um, that was a little bit of a tangent. <coughs> uh, and you can, uh, uh, if, if you want to uh, make something stand out, Different types of charts that that, that you can uh, uh, that you can use uh, in any uh, Microsoft product. Um, so so we can just pull out all those uh, those traffic related uh, injuries uh, and uh, and say that okay those made up 31 percent, which is almost as much as uh, as the falls uh, for uh, for 2011. <coughs> okay. Um, ordinal variable, same basic idea. We can we can present it with a with a frequency table, and uh, here's the, our uh, liver uh, injury stages, um, and we had uh, 103 uh, 
the, the liver injuries that were staged. Um, and, uh, and we could see, okay, 41% um, were stage two. Um, that, that seemed to be about the, the highest on the frequency on that. Um, but now you'll, you'll notice uh, what's different about the way you, you present an ordinal variable uh, graphically. Um, this looks just like a bar chart, except that the, the sides are, are touching. This is called a histogram. Um, the, the idea behind the histogram is to convey the idea that um, that these are still sort of a, a continuous type of a variable where, uh, where you don't really know where, uh, where the boundary is. Uh, so, um, so, so stage one can go all the way up to stage two and, and there may be a, a tiny bit of overlap there. Um, so, so that's why with a, with a histogram we're, we're gonna uh, have those, uh, those thicker bars that, that are actually uh, going to, uh, uh, to butt right up to each other. And you uh, may notice that with um, uh, with re, uh, uh, as it relates to, to time of onset of symptoms or something like that. Um, injury severity score, same idea, uh, where you can get uh, the, the ISSs of, uh, of zero to nine, um, of course, making up the, the bulk of, uh, of, uh, of our patients um, compared to, to those, uh, those more severely injured uh, patients. And um, and we we can go crazy uh, with uh, with all of this. Uh, and yeah, this is uh, this is actually uh, doing a quick cross tab of uh, of hour of uh, of um, the, this is actually hour of arrival uh, by uh, by day of the week of a, of arrival. Uh, looking at those that, that had a uh, positive alcohol toxicology. And, and uh, if you if you look at at this table. Um, yeah, you, you can pretty well see that, uh, that you know, it looks like, yeah, we've, we've got uh, higher numbers in the, the early morning and, and evening hours and uh, probably even on, on the weekends. Um, but of course, it's a, it's a little easier to see when, when you actually put that in graphic form uh, and say, okay, wow, now I really see that, um, that are around uh, two in the morning, especially on uh, Sundays and Saturdays, uh, you, you're much more likely to see those uh, those people with uh, with alcohol on board, um, which uh, is I know no news to to you all, um, because you experience that every weekend. All right, <coughs> so that's uh, our uh, um, our discrete variables, the nominal and ordinal variables. How, how are you going to um, organize those? But uh, but continuous variables present a, a slightly different challenge. Um, and, uh, and with those, uh, there, there are two basic um, uh, characteristics that, that you want to, uh, to be able to convey. Uh, the first is central tendency, so what's the typical value? Uh, and the, the second is dispersion, so how is it spread out? Um, so, and, and there are uh, three measures of central tendency. There's uh, the mean, the, the average. Uh, I think everybody's been through how to calculate an average. Uh, the median, which is the middle value and, uh, and the mode, uh, which is the most commonly occurring value. We really don't use mode all that much, um, except possibly with, uh, with ordinal data. Um, uh, dispersion, um, uh, you'll, you'll see this uh, presented a, a number of different ways. You can, uh, um, uh, with, uh, with range, you can say, okay, I, I get people uh, uh, here as, as long as uh, nearly uh, a year uh, uh, with, uh, with their length of stay. Uh, but, uh, but from a statistical perspective, uh, we're uh, more likely to use uh, terms like variance and standard deviation uh, and interquartile range. Uh, and, uh, and we can also describe the shape of distributions, uh, looking at skewness, uh, so how skewed are the data? Uh, so are they, is it bunched up in the lower end and, and, uh, and are there a bunch of outliers? Uh, and kurtosis means uh, how flat is it? Is it, is it really uh, spiked? Uh, or, or is it uh, fairly, uh, 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 is, is there more of a plateau? Um, don't really use that all that much, uh, but it's, uh, it's useful uh, to have in your back pocket. Um, some people get kind of scared about notation. Uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and especially where it comes to, to Greek letters. Um, so uh, so I, I'm sure you all know what the funny looking E is. Um, but that's, uh, uh, that's, that's our, our capital sigma. Uh, it just means you add everything together. Um, and, uh, and X generally means that's just the value for a specific data point. Um, X sub I means value for subject uh, I. Um, 
and uh, lowercase n is just the number of subjects in, uh, in a sample. Uh, capital N is the, the total uh, sample size. Uh, and, uh, and so, uh, so just to, to go over uh, the, the sample mean, uh, x bar as a sum of all of the uh, of all, all of the observations divided by the sample size <coughs> and then uh, variability um, well there uh, there are a number of different strategies for for getting at how uh, uh, how spread out the data is uh, you, you can look at the the sample range that's just uh, your largest value minus your smallest value uh, so you can see okay so that's that's the total spread of the data uh, but uh, if there are outliers that, that that might not be the ideal way uh, to uh, to convey that so uh, so what we use is sample variance uh, and uh, I'll just walk through this really uh, relatively quickly uh, variance is uh, is represented by s squared or uh, if it's a population variance it would be Sigma uh, squared and it's uh, it's looking at, at each data point and, and how far away it is from from the mean uh, but then you square each of those and and uh, so uh, I'll uh, kind of explain really quickly why you do that um, <clears throat> now if we want to look at how the, how the data are spread out from the mean uh, the uh, uh, the most basic thing that we could do is just subtract each value uh, from uh, from the mean value uh, and, uh, and then add them all together. Problem is, if you do that, the, the sum of all of those deviations from the mean ends up being zero. Um, as some of them are positive, some of them are negative, and by definition, it, uh, it all uh, works out to, to zero. So the way we get around that is by squaring each of those deviations. And you, once you uh, square any number, any number times itself is always gonna be positive. Uh, so, we, uh, so we get the squared deviations. Uh, and then we take the sum of the squared deviations. You may hear the term sum of squares. Uh, generally in statistics, if you hear sum of squares, uh, there that's referring to the sum of the squared deviations from some mean. Um, and, uh, and that's what, uh, what this is doing. So this is uh, part one to, to calculating a sample variance. You uh, just take each observation, subtract off the mean, square that, add those all together, uh, and that's the sum of the squares. Next thing you do is, uh, is essentially take the average of that, but it's not truly the average because we're not dividing by n, we're dividing by n minus 1. Um, the reason we do that is, by, well, that's uh, kind of the first introduction to the idea of degrees of freedom. Uh, since we've already calculated the mean, uh, that uh, takes away one value that, um, that any, uh, any observation is free to take. Um, so that's the, the way to, to think about that anyway. Uh, and so uh, the, the more conservative estimate of variance is, uh, um, is to, to divide our sum of the square deviations by, uh, by the sample size minus one. Uh, and so uh, in, in this example, we get 52.46. Uh, but, uh, but again, since it was the uh, square deviations, we want to, uh, uh, to get back to the same units that, that we originally had, so we need to take the square root of that to get the standard deviation. Um, and that's usually what we use. <coughs> when, the, uh, when the data um, is distributed normally, and, um, and I'll, I'll talk more about the normal distribution later on when we're uh, talking about different types of uh, probability uh, distributions and things like that. But there are a couple of characteristics about the normal distribution. Many uh, continuous uh, variables assume uh, represent basically this shape when you look at them, um, where, um, where the, the mean is around the middle. Uh, and, uh, and about uh, two-thirds of observations are within one standard deviation on either side of the mean, and, and, uh, and about 95% uh, of observations are within two standard deviations of the mean. Usually if you get past two standard deviations, especially if you get past three standard deviations away from the mean, we call that significantly different from the mean. <coughs> mm. And so, Here's an example, actually, again, fr from the registry of, uh, of systolic blood pressure. And it looks a little weird, but if you, if you look at the general shape, you can see, okay, yeah, that, that kind of looks like that normal distribution. 
where we've got uh, kind of the, the most commonly occurring are, are around the middle, and that's probably about where the mean is, um, and uh, and kind of tapering out at the at the lower and, and upper ends uh, here. But what's with all this spikiness? That's fairly strange. Uh, why would there be certain uh, blood pressures that stand out more than others? Well, this is where understanding how uh, how data are collected comes in handy. Um, those all tend to end in zeros. So obviously blood pressure tends to gravitate towards zero. Well, no. Um, <coughs> so, so yeah, uh, clearly the, the reason for that is, uh, and, and I'm not sure if, uh, if it depends on, uh, on the, uh, the actual mechanism that, that you use to, uh, to, uh, to measure blood pressure, if you're actually um, uh, using the and and my, my clinical terminology is really bad. So if uh, if uh, whether you're using the uh, the machine or or, uh, or actually using uh, your stethoscope uh, to measure that, um, it, and uh, it it could be that, that that people just tend to uh, uh, to round towards uh, zeros when they're when they're looking at uh, at that dial, and that's fine. Uh, but but it's something that we need to understand. So uh, so if you're looking at uh, uh, if uh, a significant change is going to be uh, somewhere less than about five millimeters of mercury, uh, then you might not be able to catch that uh, by, because of the, of the way that uh, that the data are being collected. So um, is uh, looking at that, we can say all right. So so our blood pressure data are accurate to uh, within about uh, ten. Uh, actually, probably to within about five, because more than likely people are rounding. Um, and so, so we can set these up in, uh, in basically as an ordinal variable. Uh, and so, so we can get a little better idea of, uh, of how, uh, how this is spread out. And that works out pretty well. So this is looking at 10 unit groups. Uh, but even when we look back at, uh, at how it actually was uh, distributed in, to begin with, uh, uh, we can see, all right, so our, uh, our mean is uh, 136.7 uh, and median is 138. Those are pretty close together. Uh, and the standard deviation is 24. Um, so 73% of, of our observations are actually clustered right within about uh, one standard deviation of the mean. Um, so so that's, that's pretty reliable right there. And then 95.6 uh, are, are within two standard deviations of the mean. Um, and so, so you you can you, you can make a, a pretty good statement about uh, what is the typical uh, blood pressure and and, uh, and how it's distributed uh, based on that. Okay, the the other option is to is to go with the median. Uh, median again is uh, is where uh, fifty percent of values are above and fifty percent of values are below. Uh, of course, this is more useful uh, when, when you've got outliers. Uh, we usually use median to describe house prices because we have really, really rich people in certain parts of, uh, uh, of our area. Um, that really throws off the curve. Um, and, uh, and things like, uh, uh, well, uh, salaries because we have, uh, well, chiefs and, uh, and, uh, and uh, CEOs and, and things like that that make a lot of money. Um, but uh, but uh, but anyway, uh, basically, uh, you, the way to calculate the median just put all the data in order. Uh, if you have an odd number of uh, of cases, uh, the median is the middle value. If it's even, it take the, uh, the the two values in the middle and take the average of those, uh, and that's the that's uh, your median. Uh, quartiles, um, same basic idea. Uh, first quartile is basically the, the median of the, uh, of, um, of the first half of the data. Uh, third quartile is the, um, uh, the median of, uh, of the upper half of the data. So here's uh, another continuous variable that isn't distributed quite, the, uh, quite normally uh, uh, in the same way that, that blood pressure was. This is length of stay, uh, actually in hours. And it's, uh, it's really hard to see because pretty much all of the data are down here. Uh, however, we've, uh, we've got uh, patients all the way up to here at uh, 7,000 hours, which is uh, around 300 days. Um, and so, so uh, uh, clearly, uh, this, is, uh, this is a skewed distribution, uh, especially when you consider that the, the mean value is about 90 hours. Um, and that the median is 32, so just over one day, uh, and uh, uh, and the standard deviation is 242. Um, so so 
seems like maybe the the uh, mean and standard deviation aren't going to um, uh, to describe this data quite as well uh, as uh, as it as it would uh, blood pressure, uh, and uh, and this is uh, focusing in on on that uh, that lower uh, part of the data. Is this is actually looking at about 95 percent of the data uh, actually, uh, uh, just cutting it off at, uh, at just above 300 hours. Uh, and, and you can see, all right, so we've got um, the most commonly occurring is ab about 23 hours. Uh, medians 32 means uh, 90 hours. And so, uh, so how can we describe that data so, so people might understand it? Um, well, if we, uh, uh, if we uh, plot out that, that mean and standard deviations, um, well, we, we can see, okay, the, uh, the mean minus one standard deviation goes all the way down to, uh, what, negative, um, 130 something, um, and uh, and uh, up to uh, to positive 330, um, and so uh, so uh, we, now we've got 95 percent of observations within one standard deviation of the mean, um, and so so that doesn't really describe our data as well uh, as um, uh, as it would for for a normal distribution. Um, so there's a couple of strategies to look at this. The first is to, to actually use the median uh, and the interquartile range. Um, so uh, again, the, uh, the the median again is uh, uh, 32, and uh, and so so that's going to be okay. Again, we've got about half of our uh, of our data below that, half above, uh, and uh, the interquartile range is going to uh, be the the middle 50 percent. So uh, so going from the the first 20 uh, the 25th percentile up to the 75th percentile. Uh, that's uh, that's 50 percent of your data, uh, so we can say that um, uh, that the that um, what, our median is 32, and uh, and 50 um, percent of our, our uh, observations are within um, uh, 55 uh, hours uh, of that. The other thing that we can do is to transform the data, and. I would be careful when you do this. However, um, it, it does come in handy because now uh, what I did here is uh, I, I actually took all of that uh, that length of stay data uh, and I just took the the natural logarithm of each of those observations. And now you can see it much more closely approximates a normal distribution. It looks it looks more like that that normal curve. I mean, you still do see a bit a bit of spikiness here, a little bit below the the mean. Um, but uh, but it's uh, it's much more um, uh, much more normally distribu distributed. Uh, so so now um, uh, our median is uh, 3.5, means 3.7, uh, and uh, and we can see okay here's our uh, our standard deviation uh, away from that. And uh, and so yeah now we've got about 77 percent within one standard deviation of the mean and 94 percent within two standard deviations if you look at it that way. Important thing on that is uh, is how how do you interpret that data, uh, and uh, and how are you going to uh, to communicate that to, to people who uh, who want to know about it? Um, well, what you're going to need to do is uh, is after you interpret that, then you go back and and uh, and exponentiate back that back into into your original units. Um, so uh, so it makes some sense, but uh, but that's uh, that is another uh, strategy for for dealing with that. So, bottom line is uh, when uh, when your data are symmetrical, so there's there's not outliers in one uh, in one direction. Um, uh, we we can describe the, the the data just using the mean and the standard deviation. Uh, if it's uh, if it's asymmetrical, if you have uh, positive uh, well positive or negative skew, um, with uh, outliers in just one direction, then uh, more. Uh, Probably more effective is going to be the median and interquartile range. Uh, although you might also consider uh, transforming the data. Um, there's oh yeah, there's a um, a quick way of uh, of determining whether you have outliers uh, in the data, uh, and uh, and that's using that that interquartile range again. Uh, so uh, so the the definition for for outliers generally is. Uh, anything below one and a half times the interquartile range, uh, but, well, below the first quartile, uh, uh, or above the, the the third quartile plus one and a half times the interquartile range. Um, 
I'm not going to make you guys do the math, though. Um, and, uh, and another way of, uh, of conveying that is, uh, is with these uh, box whisker plots. Um, just to, to quickly um, uh, dissect this for you. Um, this, um, the box whisker plot is, is just a, a nice way of, uh, of looking at, at how, how data are distributed, um, where the box part, the lower part of the box is the first quartile, upper part is the third quartile, so the length of the box actually is that interquartile range. The line in the middle is the median, uh, and there's uh, often a dot that represents the, the mean, uh, and, and that can float around uh, depending on, on whether the, the data are skewed. Um, and then you get uh, these whiskers. If, um, if there are outliers, then the, the whiskers go to uh, uh, extend uh, one and a half times the interquartile range beyond uh, the box. Um, if, uh, if not, it, they just go to the, uh, the, the most extreme values. Uh, and if there are outliers, uh, often computer programs will, will actually uh, plot them for you, uh, so, you can, uh, so you can look for the quality of your data. Uh, and uh, uh, and <coughs> and uh, and and see whether that's a mistake or uh, or if it's just a, a, a legitimate extreme value. Um, this is just looking at, at those two examples uh, that I uh, that, that that I mentioned before: length of stay and uh, in hours. Um, and, and actually, I, I cut this off at 700 because if I showed it all the way up to 7,000, this box would just look like a line. Um, and, uh, and you can see how the, the median is much closer to the first quartile. Mean is actually outside of the box. Uh, it's actually higher than the third quartile. And, and you've got outliers all the way out here. Uh, actually, you have outliers all the way out here. Um, <coughs> and, uh, and this is considered positive skew. Um, so the, so the, uh, we, we uh, say the direction of the skew is in the direction of the tail, not in the direction of the cluster. Uh, that's another thing I uh, need to mention. Um, so if uh, uh, so, uh, if you have outliers going way out uh, positive, uh, that's the that's the way it's skewed. Um, for uh, for blood pressure, uh, we can see it's much more balanced. The median, uh, uh, the mean and median are are about equal, uh, and the the box is uh, uh, pretty symmetrical. <coughs> and um, uh, and uh, so uh, so yeah, so there's there's uh, really no skew involved in that. Uh, and so we're going to describe that just using the, the mean and the standard deviation. All right, so time for a quiz. OK, so we've got some trauma surgeon who's in a huff. Um, no, you guys are pretty mellow guys. Um, and wants a summary of, uh, of the, the patients he's operated on by age, sex, and mechanism of, uh, of injury. So what type of analysis is that? Descriptive, you're all screaming at me. Yes. Yes, I was, I was having fun with PowerPoint. Um, all right, so now uh, we want to study to examine whether pre-hospital hypothermia is, a, uh, is associated with in-hospital mortality, uh, and we're going to control for age, gender, and mechanism of injury. Uh, so then what's the dependent variable? Remember, what's dependent variable? It's one that depends on something else. In hospital mortality. In hospital mortality, yeah. So, so that's uh, going to be the outcome. Stand back. I don't know how big that thing gets. OK. Um, OK, injury severity score is highly skewed. It actually is with a median of 5, mean of 9, but it all goes all the way up to 75. Um, Inspection shows a number of outliers on the upper end. Um, so what's the most appropriate measure of central tendency and dispersion? Are you going to use mean or median? For say, yeah, median. So, uh, so, um, so then, uh, do you think standard deviation or interquartile range would be more appropriate? Interquartile range. Interquartile range yeah. Yay. Very happy little D. Okay. Um, and so, which of the following is an ordinal variable? Mechanism, age, gender, injury score. And you, you can transform a continuous variable into an ordinal variable. Um, so, so yeah, uh, uh, age groups could, uh, could potentially be ordinal. Um, but, uh, but for this, uh, it would be the, the liver injury score. All right, well, and that's the end of that. Any questions so far?